ask me any hard ones. I won't. Me <laughs> yeah, Okay. You got it? Yeah. So we were quiet. You don't have to go. That's all right. You just be outside. Well, I think you can stand out in the hall. <laughs> you do have a hall that I can't. You want to stay in the hall. <laughs> it's really okay. <laughs> it's informal. I mean, there's family out in the hall. Yeah. And I think she's. <laughs> so, uh, we're backstage at the Grand Ole Opry, and of all places, oh. yes, in the Woman of Country uh, dressing room. <laughs> what are your impressions of the Opry and the significance of being in a room like this and the legends that have built the organization uh, that it is today? Oh, it's, it's, you can kind of feel the resonance of all these people. You know, we just lost Loretta, and, you know, I'm sure that we, and I've, I've shared dressing rooms with Loretta before. Uh, when we used to do a lot of TV shows in Nashville. And uh, I kind of feel that energy here, and um, it's good to be in the, in the women of country. Uh, with the women, uh, I think that uh, there's a, I have a very warm place in my heart. I'll never forget when I first started how Tammy Lynette took me under her wing, and nobody knew who I was. And, We'd be doing, they'd be doing a photo session, everybody would pay, be paying attention to Tammy, and she'd say, and this is my friend Lacey J. She'd pull me to her and, and you know, introduce me to people. And a lot of the women were very supportive. Jamie Fricky did all the background uh, stuff on my early records, and she was a much, much bigger, she was already a big star. And she did that for me. So I'm grateful here, and it's kind of like, um, I'm that weird cousin from the West Coast that comes to visit every once in a while. And this is a family. It's like, my, I feel like a, a lot of them, they feel like cousins. It really is. It's a, and when you think of standing in that center circle, first time in 20 years now, what comes to your mind when you walked out there, saw the audience, and, and did your show? Well, I just, you know, I was just grateful. Because um, to have a song like 16th Avenue be your signature song, and I have so many people lives touched by that song. That song really um, touched a lot of songwriters' lives and a lot of people who loved, had people, loved ones who came to Nashville and tried to make it. You know, not everybody does. And so it's, uh, uh, the song is great. It felt very good. I was really glad my partner had to deal with it. Exactly, exactly. What artists stick out in your mind, past or present, that have been a part of the Aubrey family or who you have a personal memory or connection with? Oh, so many, so many. But I love Jeannie Seeley. Jeannie Seeley, I, I never forget. We were, I can't even remember what. I think it was a cruise. We might no, it wasn't really a TV show. We were on. She sang years ago. She sang "Who Needs You." And have you heard her song "Who Needs You"? I believe I have. It's I've been got a while. whiskey. You know, uh -huh. fifty proof or something proof. I've got whiskey. I've got. Blah, 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 who needs you? Yeah. It's, I mean, it was really good. I told her at the time, I said, this is really a good song. She had a hit on it a couple of months okay. ago, and it was a pretty big hit. But I just love her, and, you know, uh, Bobby Bear, uh, was good friend David uh, Frizzell, all these, you know, Mo Bandy, and Peach, Graham Brown, they're like my cousins, and yeah. so I don't get to see them that often, so it's great to come back and see everybody. Fantastic. Um, Oh, one, one question that I, that I didn't get a chance to ask you when we talked on the phone. Another great song that I'd like you to share some reflection on is your duet with George Jones. Well, we did a couple. Yeah, okay. Uh, back then, before technology came into play, it was a time where you actually shared the studio with each other. What was it, what was it like and your impressions of George Jones? Oh, George Jones, was, he, was, he was fun. He was really a fun guy. He, and, and singing harmony with him was kind of like, you know, being on a roller coaster. You know, size seven round and made a go. You know, and when we, I'm not a great harmony singer and I don't do that very much, but I, um, it was really fun to do with him because of all those little things that he did with his voice. And I remember we were down doing a special uh, somewhere down in Louisiana. George had probably 40 or 50 people at this long table, and they were having traditional Cajun food. 
and he says, Lacey, I want you to taste this seafood sausage boudin. So this is the boudin, is, this is why we come here. This is so good. They make it better here than any place in the world. He says, it's right there on your plate. He said, take a bite of that and tell me what you think. So I pulled out my knife and my fork and I tried to cut off a piece of the boudin sausage. <laughs> well, it's like solid rubber. <laughs> you can't cut it. The whole table just cracked up and he goes, no, no. A prop of kunas eats, eats, <laughs> eats boudin this way, and he held the sausage up above his head and squeezed it into his mouth. <laughs> but he had a good, he had a good time uh, playing that trick on him. Because he knew I didn't know anything about boudin sausage. Sure. But it was, it is. Have you ever had it? I've never had it. I've heard of if it. If you ever get down to Louisiana, then you know a place, and somebody tells you that they have really good boudin. Uh -huh. It's one of the most really delicious tasting foods I've ever tasted. It's really good. Awesome. It's kind of spicy, you know, Cajuns. Very nice, very <laughs> nice. Uh, with Christmas coming up, do you have a Christmas tradition or carry on a favorite Christmas memory? <laughs> well, we, did, we do have something that we do. I have this dog that I rescued, and he was on his very last days in the pound, at the Burbank pound, and my friend who's here tonight uh, called me up and she said, you know, there's this dog, and he's only he spent the whole first year and a half of his life in the Burbank Pound, and nobody will adopt him. And everybody at the Pound loves him, but they've already got two or three dogs themselves, and they can't get him adopted. And he's running out of time. They're going to put him down in a day or two, tomorrow maybe. And I, and I was out in Ohio, and I said, Gina, it's like midnight, and I'm in Ohio, and I'm not coming home for two weeks. I said, I'll tell you what, tomorrow I'll get on the phone and see if somebody will foster him for a while. And when I get home, I'll help you find a home for him. We'll get him out. And um, that next morning, you know, it's she's out in, on the West Coast, so it's hours different. She called me really early in the morning. She said, they're going to kill him. He's going to die. And we can't let him die because he's, he's Carl the dog. <laughs> we can't let Carl the dog die because he's Carl the dog. <laughs> So after a lot of this, I mean, there were they always would be as horrible, and she was sobbing on the other end of the phone. And so I finally said to her, I said, "If you foster this dog till I get back there, because I can't put him with my other dogs, they don't know him, and you know, they might fight and kill each other or something." I said, "Wait, if you'll take care of him till I get home in two weeks, I will foster him and I will find a good home for him." Well, sir, as things went by, we didn't ever really find a home for Carl because once Carl came to my house, he was pretty comfortable. Mm -hmm. And Carl was a perfect dog. He learned not to go in the house in like one lesson. And he learned everything except he had a monumental need to chew. Mm -hmm. And he would chew anything. Anything and everything. Shoes, coats, couches, mm -hmm. my rugs. It was horrible. Well, we had a good friend who was a wonderful chef. She invited us for Christmas brunch. Mm -hmm. So we went down to her house for Christmas brunch, and my kids are older, and we're older, older, and we thought, well, we'll open our presents when we get home. And we, of course, let Carl be in the house with the tree and the presents and everything else. When we came back, the living room was two feet deep in tiny pieces of presents, 50 cent size pieces of presents, shattered Christmas balls. The Christmas tree was over on its side. All the little lights were crushed. It was the biggest mess you've ever seen. Wow. It was horrible. And so it had been about a year and a half, and I'd been real patient with Carl, you know, giving him his own thing to chew and stuff like that. And uh, this time I wasn't patient. Carl and I had to come to Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> and Carl has never chewed another thing. <laughs> and we uh, ended up writing a book about it. Dale's wife uh, illustrated the book, and... Uh, Leslie Adams, my manager, put the book together, and we wrote a song called Carl the Christmas Song. So our tradition in all our Christmas shows is to sing this song. Carl the Christmas dog ate the Christmas tree. He nibbled on the tiny lights, then vomited on me. <laughs> it was on and on like that. And a bunch of my friends and I just sat around and wrote it, and then we made a video, and we did a reenactment. So you can go on YouTube and go to Carl the Christmas dog, Lacey J. Dalton, on YouTube, and you can see the video that we made. And if uh, you know, if uh, your people have grandchildren, 
it's a fun thing for them to watch, and they can actually get a copy of Carl the Dog the Book by writing to uh, lacyjdalton.org, or the money, uh, all the proceeds go to our Wild Horse Foundation, which is letemrun.org. Yeah, we've talked about that. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Very so good. that's one way we raise money for the wild horses is with Carl's debacle. Got a quick request for you. Can we just sing one line together of 16th Avenue? I know which line. God, God bless the boys who make the noise on 16th <laughs> Avenue. Well, that was just horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I can now Let's say. Let's try it one more time. God bless the boys who make the noise on 16th Avenue. And God bless all the girls who make the noise on 16th Avenue. I can say that I sang the song with you at the opera. <laughs> so I really appreciate That sounds appreciate like a bucket list sort of thing. It is. It's so fun to talk to you on the phone. Thank you for, uh, I can't believe you came all the way up here, and I hope you're having a good time. Oh, we are. We're, we're actually pre um, um scouting out hotels and other events for another uh, trip to Nashville to follow up what we did last July <coughs> wow. and all that and then uh, to, to have it be the weekend that, that you were here and all that. Do you mind uh, signing a couple of albums real quick? That girl Mackenzie is a really good singer. Yeah. Do you have a Sharpie? Cause I, have I do. Okay. Look at him. He, he is cute. Uh, I am prepared. Oh, there's your just J.O. J.O. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Joe Don Baker. This was a uh, part of our trip last uh, last July. The Jeannie Seely was a part of. Oh, I love Seely. John Barry and Don. Oh, by the way, I had Don, I had um, dinner with Donna Fargo yesterday, and she wanted me to tell you she said hello, and she loves you. Well, you tell her I said hello. I think my friend, I think my old road manager is here with her tonight, but no, I didn't they know. They went to the wrong. Right Who's that? You're kidding. They went to the wrong place. Oh really? Oh my gosh, that would be that would be my old road manager in Donna Fargo. <laughs> but yeah, she was a part of our trip back in July, and one of the highlights. It was just fantastic. This is one of my favorites. Yeah. This had a lot of good stuff and oh you like this one oh, this one was man. different do you yeah this was a different uh this was a whole different thing wasn't it yes. i had a blast making this you can just sign your name on that okay do you want the date no How about awesome that? that's awesome that was a good sharpie yeah and then if we can grab a couple quick pictures and then we'll be off we because can. i know that you're and on Joe the schedule. Donna 